Throughout history, there have been a handful of people who have done countless amazing things, but few of these amazing people have been recognized for their accomplishments. One of these unrecognized individuals is Harris Wilford. Since his early years, he has devoted his life to bettering his country and the world. Harris Wilford was born April 9, 1926, in New York City. He attended the University of Chicago and graduated in 1948. Two years later, he furthered his studies by attending Howard School of Law. There, he earned his second law degree in June of 1954. From 1954 to 1958, Harris Wilford began his public service career. He was an assistant to Father Hesburgh on the Commission of Civil Rights. Soon after, in 1959, Harris became a law professor at the University of Notre Dame. Wilford was an early supporter of the civil rights movement in the late 1950s. He became a friend and unofficial advisor to Martin Luther King Jr. After teaching one semester at Notre Dame, Mr. Wilford was recruited to help in John F. Kennedy's campaign. In his position, Harris Wilford played a helpful role in the Kennedy administration before and after the election of 1960. He was originally recruited in 1959 to be a speechwriter for John F. Kennedy, but he soon became a strong voice for civil rights. Once his interest and knowledge in this field became apparent, he was put into a civil rights section for the campaign. Here he became a prominent figure for Kennedy's civil rights image. A great example of this would be Kennedy's call to Coretta King. Harris Wilford along with Sergeant Shriver decided that Kennedy needed to do something about civil rights. They came up with the idea and convinced Kennedy to call Coretta King and comfort her during Martin Luther King's wrongful imprisonment. And said to Senator Kennedy, you know, Jack, what about calling Mrs. King, conveying sympathy, and, and gave the case for it, and, and Kennedy thought briefly and, and said, it's a good idea, do you have her number? And he did. Uh, and then it became a, a big story. Uh, Daddy King, the father of Martin Luther King, had been on a full-page ad, I, uh, 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 supporting Nixon uh, because Kennedy was a Catholic and uh, Daddy King announced if he has the courage to wipe the tears from my daughter in laws eyes, I have the courage to vote for a Catholic for president. With Martin Luther King Sr.'s endorsement of Kennedy, Kennedy's support from African Americans soared. At the end of the 1960 election, Kennedy won the popular vote by a small margin. Many credit this margin to the African American voters. If Harris Wilford had not come up with the idea of telephoning Coretta King, Martin King Sr.'s approval never would have come, and Kennedy would have lost the African American vote and possibly the election. After Kennedy's election, Harris Wilford along with Sergeant Shriver and others began an intensive search for candidates to fill the governmental positions that needed to be filled. This group of talent searchers found many people that may have been skipped over because of political party or current position. One of these people is Robert McNamara. Robert McNamara had recently become the president of the Ford Motor Company when he was approached by Sergeant Shriver. He eventually took the position of Secretary of Defense. After completing Kennedy's talent search, Harris Wilford was appointed as John F. Kennedy's special assistant on civil rights. Here he advised Kennedy as to what steps he should take to further the civil rights movement. In this position, he talked to Martin Luther King Jr. and others about what still needed to be done. How would things be different if Kennedy would not have been elected? I'd probably be in jail. When I applied for a job as a coach and a teacher in the school system in Baltimore, Maryland, where I was living at the time that I retired from professional football, the superintendent of that department looked at me and said, there's only two schools at which you can teach. And they were the two African-American high schools. And this man was a graduate of Indiana University and he treated me as a second-class citizen. Harris Wilford was a strong supporter for integration. He was against the so-called separate but equal facilities provided for African-Americans and whites. One of the largest differences in these facilities were the schools. 
I went to a segregated school. I went by bus 14 miles to get to a school that was in nowhere near as good a school as white children. They had, they had buildings that looked like school buildings. There must have been six different buildings where I went to school. School for mechanics, we didn't have an auditorium, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. Certainly an inadequate one. We were separate. That was okay. But it wasn't. And that's the problem. After serving as Kennedy's special assistant on civil rights, Harris was then appointed to the position of special representative to Africa and director of operations in Ethiopia for the Peace Corps. Harris Wolford had wanted to be involved in the Peace Corps for a while now and finally got his wish. Well, the, the three purposes of the Peace Corps, um, people argued about which is the most important. The first purpose is to help developing nations, new nations, developing nations, meet their needs or, for uh, manpower, for, for help. Uh, second purpose is to help uh, uh, America to, Americans to understand the world uh, even more, or no, that's the second purpose is to help other countries uh, understand America better. And the third purpose is to make America understand the world better. The three purposes, and Shriver used to say when we would argue as to which was the most important of the three goals that the President and Congress set for the Peace Corps. And Shriver used to say, it's all three, and they need to be sort of argued about all the time as to which are the most important. But there isn't any one that you take uh, and say that is the purpose. In his position in the Peace Corps, Harris Wilford helped prepare the world and the country by following the three goals of the Peace Corps. Help developing nations meet their needs, help other countries understand America better, and help Americans understand the world better. In conclusion, Harris Wofford is an amazing individual who has done amazing things. He worked closely with Kennedy before and after the election, creating a strong civil rights platform for him. He was also a friend and unofficial advisor to Martin Luther King Jr. and traveled with him on many occasions. He was instrumental in the first years of the Peace Corps and served as its associate director for several years. Since then, he has continued to make our country and the world a better place. Harris Wilford is an unsung hero who has, does, and will change the world from the background.